This is the Plover River as it leaves Jordan Pond. And this is where you would start your journey on the trip. Nice bridge here. This is kind of an atypical part of the river in that there's a fair amount of current and it actually there's actually a little downhill little gravel here. Later on it'll flatten out. Alright, so the river do have quite a bit of wood in them. So that's a clear passage there. And actually that's a clear passage there. But if you don't like wood in your river, this is a bad place. There's a great big turtle up there. Coming up on one of the markers. This is where the Boy Scout camp is. The only mark of it on the river is this large sandbank. I haven't seen any herons today. Herons are pretty common. Red tails, Cooper's hawks, a lot of large turtles, snapping turtles and other turtles, and a lot of uh, kingfishers. You often see a kingfisher and chase them all the way down the river. than halfway now. This is very much the kind of forest you go through. Lots of bird song, a fair amount of wood to go around. You can check the height of the water at the USGS river gauge for the Plover River. This is probably between three and a half and four feet, which is a real nice hike to go through the river at because it's not flooding its banks in any way. And yet it's deep enough so that you don't have to walk through shallow parts. are mainly real obvious and pretty easy to handle. And there's another big tree that's been sawed off to make, make a nice easy path through. little notion of what the river does. It's currently cutting a new channel right through that forest there to replace that channel which makes a big bend and after that big bend it connects straight up through there. So that's the short way. Unfortunately it's right through the trees and you can't kayak through there. This is Iverson Park. As you see the River's kind of channelized here, which can make getting in and out a little more difficult. There is a dock here. Uh, usually you can paddle up to that, and it's very shallow there, and you can get out. Otherwise, those, uh, those nice rock edges can make it kind of difficult to get in and out. A little further on, there is a sandy beach, but you have to go under a kind of a low bridge to get there, and the sandy beach is a swim area, so there's often a lot of people in there. This is also where if you had rented a kayak, you would probably be dropping it off. Below this, there's, uh, you'll enter a, the headwaters of McDill Pond when there is a McDill Pond. And that's a relatively uh, unexciting piece of water, which is right now is all drained. 